It wasn't exactly a reunion, and it wasn't exactly in Vermont, but I picked up my iPhone to answer the incoming call from my cousin. He'd called me last year and asked if I could attend a family reunion he'd put together in Vermont, but last year I declined. I was too busy. Sitting at my desk now. Admittedly. I was bored. I had nothing going on. I stared blankly for one second at my desktop wallpaper. A red cardinal calling out for others at sunrise. And I said, count me in. I watched the train arrive silently. Trains had gotten a lot quieter since the adjustment. I stood on the grass of the platform and breathed in the smell of fragrant flowers. I was suddenly looking forward to this weekend reunion. I'd have the chance to reconnect with my cousin after so many years. I used to be good friends with him here in the city until he'd moved nearly across the galaxy to work for a startup in what everyone thought would be the next big solar system. The train dropped me off at a surface-to-orbit portal. I overheard someone talking about how they'd upgraded it since last time. Now there wasn't even a memory gap. Something about unbroken flow, they said. I walked forward through the portal and saw that a shuttle had just landed. That was lucky. Sometimes you'd have to wait like 30 minutes. I boarded, and we launched so smoothly I couldn't even tell we were moving. When I was younger, I'd once taken a shuttle directly from the surface. The acceleration was so intense I couldn't breathe for what felt like 10 seconds. Less than a day later, I emerged from a wooded snowy path and arrived at a spa lodge fused with the body of a whale. The surface of this planet goes underwater for half a year. The lodge is fully sealed airtight and is open year-round apparently. That's what reception said while offering me a discounted rate if I booked again six months from now. My biometrics were added to their database. I thanked the attendant, and I heard a familiar voice as I turned around. My cousin gave me an excited pat on the shoulder and welcomed me to the reunion. The rest of my extended family would get here tomorrow, he said. We joked and caught up for half an hour. He told me the snow and ice here contained a neurochemical that activated when it melted into the pools causing something called memory repair in humans. A harmless health benefit, but shocking to those who bathed unaware. He had to make a work call, and I was tired from my travels, so we retired to our respective rooms. Mine had a stunning view of the mountains. I never saw a light switch anywhere, but I never needed one. The lights always seemed to know exactly how bright I wanted them to be. They faded to black as I laid down to sleep, even dimly coming back on when I got up to use the bathroom in the middle of the night. The next morning I came downstairs to a table filled with breakfast foods. I ate a delicious pancake with a glass of fresh orange juice, which made me remember a glass of orange juice I drank on a summer vacation I'd taken with a few friends after high school. Until then I'd completely forgotten about the trip. My cousin arrived and must have seen my astonished expression because he said they chill the orange juice with this planet's snow. Then I noticed his expression. Bad news, I said. He told me the rest of the family's travel was delayed. He showed me on his phone how their ship had to wait for storms to clear, and they wouldn't be able to land for a few days, so we'd both miss them entirely. It wasn't terrible news. Most of my family was not even human and I had a hard time understanding and sometimes even perceiving them. Their kind phased into and out of the human visible spectrum as a type of body language. After breakfast, my cousin and I sat in one of the more interesting pools at the hotel. This pool was pure liquid snow. The staff said that for a human to immerse themselves in this pool would cause them to live entire lives they'd never lived, and could cause inexperienced minds to break. They suggested we enter fully clothed. The water swirled around our ankles like smoke without making our pants wet, and our entire bodies felt warm. Not warm like sitting in a sauna, but perfectly room temperature. The kind of temperature where you can't feel your skin, where you can't tell if you're inside or outside, where you feel a seamless connection to your surroundings. Perfect calmness. Perfect timelessness. The staff modified the pool to project our memories onto a stone surface at the side of the pool and we chatted for a long while and watched alternating memories we'd forgotten animate on the surface before us. Sometime later the staff invited us into a cool-down room in which a tea master led us through a minimalist tea ceremony. We drank three kinds of tea in silence, and I recall feeling extremely rejuvenated afterward, despite feeling a profound sense of calm contentment during the ceremony. Both my cousin and I felt a rush of energy upon leaving the tea room. 
The heat from the spa seemed to stick with us as we hiked across a frozen lake to investigate a glowing crack in the side of a mountain, another activity the hotel staff highly recommended. As we got closer, we entered a cave in the base of the mountain with many different colors of ice. After some time spent marveling at the gleaming reflective surfaces of the ice, I noticed the entire cave looked artistically rendered. It didn't even seem real. My cousin and I looked at each other, and we were animated as well. Another traveler in the cave explained that the reflective ice changes the nature of light that enters the cave, causing things to look almost like a cartoon visually. This other traveler pointed to some ice that was orange in color. He said this ice is said to have formed before time started, and if one stood up close and looked deeply into it, they could see that many times from past universes were layered together, frozen together in time forever. I looked into the ice with my cousin standing beside me. The traveler said the ice grew very slowly, adding only a very thin outer layer every billion years. Every reflection that fell upon the ice would eventually be added to a layer. My cousin and I standing beside each other with our smiling faces cartoonishly rendered by the light inside the cave would remain here for eternity. We slowly hiked back to the hotel for dinner saying barely anything to each other. What was left to say after all we'd said today? After all we'd shared? We could nearly read each other's thoughts. Dinner that night was as unexpected as everything else. On a candlelit table sat so many dishes I'd previously eaten and forgotten about. Some my cousin said he hadn't had in years. I walked along the table examining the food. My cousin told me the books in this room and on this table were special. This was a very important tradition on this planet for visitors that would leave the next day. Some of the books were actually cake. They looked like books, but you could slice and eat them like cake. He spent longer than I thought he would explaining the cake books. Okay, I said. Then he said for humans if you ate a cake book, it was just like reading it but it was only safe to eat one. Digestion took a lot of energy. I spent some time looking over the books at dessert time, carefully deciding which one I would eat. One book caught my eye, and I picked it up off the table. This one isn't cake, I said. My uncle told me in this tradition, one book on the table was not cake. It was frowned upon to speak of this book in advance, but if a visitor found this book, they should keep it. Whenever this book was opened, it would allow the reader to enter a state where they felt entirely connected with the moment that they were experiencing exactly then. Fully experiencing, appreciating, and enjoying the moment was foundational to the culture on this planet. The next morning I said goodbye to my cousin and departed back to my apartment. A day of travel later, as I approached the city by train and looked out over the forest before me, I opened the book and immediately felt connected to where I was and what I was experiencing in a way that I'd never felt before. I was glad to have had the chance to reconnect with a member of my family. It was unfortunate that many other family members couldn't make it, but the time I spent together with my cousin was valuable and transformative. The feeling the book had given me in that moment on the train continued with me as I made my way back to my apartment. It was the same apartment I had been assigned 30 years ago, the same laptop, the same desk, but it felt changed somehow. It felt more alive and there was a depth to it that hadn't been there before.